This is the Apple IIe computer, and I finally have got the serial terminal set up working for it. It took a lot of, uh, a lot of experimentation or, to get it to work. Maybe not a whole lot, but some. And the way I've got it hooked up, I've got a, a cable going from the uh, Super Serial card through a gender adapter. And it's going down to the serial port on the on the PC here. This is originally the cable I ran to the digital VT220 uh, terminal in the other room, but I just brought it in here because I think I may have had a bad cable here. And I need to check out these cables. I think I, some of these are straight through cables. And with this little adapter on the uh, Super Serial card, you can either change it between uh, a straight through cable where it'll I guess it'll invert what goes to what or a modem cable where you gotta use a cable where the transmit of the computer end or of the terminal end goes to the receive of the uh, host end and vice versa. This cable I wired up so that the transmit of the terminal goes to the receive of the of the uh, host and the transmit of the host goes to the receive of the terminal. I guess it's called a null modem cable. So I put this little thing here to modem. But you got to be careful with that thing. I broke one of the pins off of it because I didn't know really how it came out. I just tried to pull it with my fingers and I thought it was just something that might have slid on or something, but it's like an integrated circuit chip. It fits into an IC socket. All it is is some, some jumper wires in it. And the schematic of it is available on the internet, but I broke the darn thing. So luckily the pin I broke didn't affect the operation of it, but what I've learned to do is to get a little screwdriver down underneath the little jumper block and uh, and pull it out that way very very carefully or to remove the serial card and use an IC puller. I might have an IC puller somewhere but uh, anyway I I finally found out that in order to use a, a, a null modem cable I need to put that thing on modem rather than terminal and I may just rewire these other cables so that it's like that because I think that's the best set up. That way it will work with no matter what kind of terminal you want to hook it up to. And I got the Super Serial card in slot 2 and I got the modem manager installed and if you just google ADT Pro and you go to the ADT Pro website they've got a link to a, another site where it shows how to hook up a Apple II as a serial terminal and you can download a program from that called Modem Manager and I just did the ADT Pro through the cassette ports into the Apple II to, uh, to get, it, get it set up and you might ask well why didn't I use a serial port well I couldn't get the RXTX libraries to work on the Slackware PC for some reason it can be so complex to set up all those libraries on Linux software sometimes so I said well I'm not going to waste my time with that I'm just going to use the cassette ports even though it's slower maybe sometime I'll get the, the get those libraries working so I can get ADT Pro to work on a serial hookup but what I did first you gotta create the install disk and I've got the work disk up inside the drive the you put the install disk in then when it's finished and you set up your parameters and then you have to write what's been set up with with this disk. You write a file out to the work disk and that saves your setup because if it was on a hard drive like on a modern computer all the files would be on one drive but since these disks can only store so much you gotta have different disks. And I remember back when I was a kid in the school library we had a, a little tool that you could put onto the disk and I was probably about uh, 11 or 12 years old or so and I helped out in the library with the computer stuff and I'd put that little tool on there and notch the disk so that you could flip the disk over for the other side and if you could do if you had one of those tools you could probably notch the disk so that you could put the install on one side and the work disk on the other but I don't so I just have to use two disks 
One important thing I learned is that it's got to be double sided, double density, not high density. These won't work with high density. It might appear that it's writing to the disk, but the drive will not be able to read the disk once it's done, so you just have wasted your time if it's not the right type of disk. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Apple II. I've already, this is running Slackware, and I actually ordered these disks from osdisk.com, and this is Slackware 13.37. I couldn't, I had a heck of a time trying to figure out how to write this newest Slackware version to a CD or to a DVD. I did it in the past with a previous version of Slackware, but these were not expensive at all. I thought, well, I'll just order these. I didn't. Sometimes by just spending a little bit more money, you can save yourself a whole heck of a lot of time in doing something by letting somebody else do the hard work for you. So that's what I did. And I installed it on this gateway, which I had to replace the graphics card on. But OSDisk.com, every time there's a new version of Slackware that I want to put on, I think I'll just go to them and, and get it. So now that it's all set up, I'm going to turn on the Apple II. Looks like we're getting a lot of reflections there. Let's see, I might turn the lights out here. So here's the, let's see if it'll, you can see it here. Here's the Moda Manager screen. And the thing is, I don't think it remembers the parameters from time to time. So we'll first set up the baud rate. Let's see if it'll work. I bet you it won't. Okay, I guess it actually does. I've got a login prompt. Let me, let's, let's just do ls and we'll see if we get the proper... Yeah, no we don't. We've got to do the terminal setup for VT220. So let's just do we'll do the commands and you gotta do control escape and that gets you to the command prompt. The first command will be M and that's your baud rate. Baud rate will be 9600 and then we'll do another, we'll do control escape and we'll hit the colon and that will get us to the terminal emulation which we need to be VT220 so now let's see if I can do an ls command on my directory here and see it's normal. So let's see, we can go now to, we'll do links. I think I got links already, already in there. Yeah. We'll do links so that we can get to the World Wide Web. So there's links. And I like to use the links that's spelled L-I-N-K-S as opposed to L-Y-N-X. I just think it, it, it's easier to use. So I'm going to hit the S command and I've got some uh, bookmarks in here and I, I found a website called www.gutenberg.org and it's one that I had even looked at long ago but I found lots of things like uh, cookbooks and uh, other like books of poetry and stuff like by James Whitcomb Riley and it's really good for these terminals because you can because uh, it's all just regular text so I save those in bookmarks and I'll see now there's uh, the complete works of James Whitcomb Riley on Project Gutenberg But this is always real nostalgic for me because this is how I would browse the internet when I was a teenager. So I still can like to uh, read things like this. Of course, modern websites, it can vary as far as how it displays, but this Project Gutenberg website is really good for these text only terminals. So there's the Apple II setup. I'm going to now put everything back together and we'll demonstrate it with the green monitor.